Hey everyone, I'm Steve. Welcome back to Kettlehaven Ranch. Uh, this video, originally we're going to use an endoscope to look into the hives to see how they're doing. But, a little bit of a change of plans when I get out here and look. We are at 49 degrees Fahrenheit. It is the 2nd of February of 2024. And uh, as I turn the camera around, slowly by hand, you can see there is no snow, nothing. So we are already having uh, a lot of activity out here. It's got me concerned because we're gonna have freezing temperatures again and the pollen sources for the bees are quite a ways out, uh, maybe two to three months. So we're gonna have to come up with an emergency feeding schedule for them, but the neat thing was with this endoscope, we can look into the hive and see the condition of the bees. Now, originally I was going to come out here just as I'm dressed right now and do that. It shouldn't have been a problem. I get out here and look, and look what we have. A lot of activity. I don't think I'm going to be getting down there with the endoscope, sticking it into the beehive, and... Uh, now with all this going on. So right now, this isn't cleansing activity, cleansing flights. It almost appears to be more orienteering. I'm not positive, but uh, they are taking off and they are looking for food sources. And I see a batch comes out and they fly around in circles for a bit and then off they go. I have bees, I'm sure the GoPro is not picking it up, but I have bees going out towards the river, going towards the horse, going towards the pig pen, and uh, they're very active. So I think with this particular hive, which was a strong hive last fall, we're gonna pass the endoscope this time. And I'm gonna go over and we have some hives that don't have any activity showing at the moment. Of course, they don't have the sunshine on them on the front, like that hive's been getting sunshine. But we still have bee activity over here. So let's go ahead and um, I'll get suited up and reposition the cameras, show you a quick uh, presentation about the endoscope, and we'll see what we have going on in there. But for right now, oh, this is gorgeous. There's bees everywhere, live bees, of course, dead bees. You gotta expect that. All right, let's move on. Well, piss ants. Um, I changed cameras and the microphone got screwed up. So just like I've done in the past on some tractor videos, we're going to do a voiceover and uh, try to get the information to salvage the video. What I'm going through right there is the endoscope that I purchased cheap through Amazon, like 24 bucks. There's a link down in the bottom. It uh, is designed to hook into your iPhone. I'm sure they have them for other phones also. But it is controlled by an app that you download on the iPhone. And it has uh, a couple feet of cord. Uh, and then from there, it has a very small camera uh, surrounded by a bunch of LED lights. And um, you plug it in your phone, sort of like what I'm doing there. You dial up the app. And from there, it's taking a picture. Well, you can actually see in the video. You can see the lights on, sort of dangling there like a Christmas light at my knees. Um, and that lights it up when it goes in. I was hoping it would do a better job than it did. Uh, we'll go ahead and look at it. Um, pretty, pretty neat. It comes with some accessories. Uh, one is a 90 degree angle mirror, which I was hoping uh, would work here, but it, it doesn't line up right. I don't know whether the mirror screwed up or, or something, or just a gimmick to make you buy it instead of a little more, instead of a little bit more expensive one. So. Um, anyway, into the hive we go, and right off the bat, we see honeycomb as I'm using the endoscope to go between uh, honey frames. And this is the very outside, I'm on that outside edge. I should have gone through the middle of the hive, but I didn't think about it at the time. Um, so on one side, you have capped honey uh, and capped sugar, too. I think they're getting some of the sugar from up above they've capped. And then uh, dry sugar, the granular sugar I use for the, the winter feed. And then when you look on the next frame that's at the lower level there, 
Um, that would be one of the outside frames uh, on the end of the hive, inside the hive box. And that one is still has a foundation that hasn't been um, honeycombed yet. And we'll see that more clearly as we go up through the hive. And that's the bottom of the frame, obviously. There we go. There's some honey. And you can see the white, light-colored foundation that hasn't been worked on very much. And then it goes to a yellow where they started to draw out honeycomb. And I would guess that sugar there, the white, because they've done that before with the, with the sugar, the white sugar from above. They bring it down and they'll actually work it. No sign of bees, which has me concerned. So from here, I want to go and open up the hive. So repositioning the camera, we're up to the hive. You can see the pigs, some of our Idaho pasture pigs in the background there. And they're sort of enjoying the warm weather. And I, I didn't even bother taking the hive tool out because I didn't think I was going to open up the hives today. But it was such nice weather, and to confirm whether this hive was still going or not, after that endoscope didn't seem to pick up any bees, um, I decided to pull the, the top and let's take a look. So, absolutely the top um, box we have here is my empty deep that's filled with straw. I use that as insulation for the bees, and also it absorbs moisture from the hive. And then we have an, an inner uh, cover and pull that out of the way and right off the bat I have bees everywhere dead bees too so the cluster has moved all the way up to the top of the second deep box so they're way up there at the top of the hive and they are eating the, the crystallized or granulated sugar um, that uh, is probably turned a lot of it is turned to a cake absorbing moisture in the hive as it acts as sort of a a desiccant, uh, which is nice. That's sort of an added feature of putting the just sugar, raw sugar in. And uh, so that's kept them alive, which is really good news. Uh, it does tell me, though, uh, with this El Nino year, that we got to feed more and get the feed ready to go. The, the bees didn't go um, in the cluster and stay in cluster like they normally do. And they've been very active, even though we don't have any pollen outside the hive for them. And probably won't have pollen, honestly, uh, into April, unless this El Nino really warms up everything and everything blooms early. It might happen. Very odd, weird, weird, strange weather pattern for here. Um, normally, there'd be two feet of snow around the hive and insulating the hive, too, which is another point that uh, that snow as it piles up does help insulate the hive. So, I'm putting the box back on. We're good to go. Pretty much talking about um, coming out and doing some winter patties, getting those going for them. And the interesting thing, some of the bees I see flying around, those aren't the darker, um, smaller winter bees that I typically have. Yeah, they are the spring bees, so there's stuff going on already. Pretty interesting. So, hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, the next one we'll get the, get the <laughs> microphone fixed. And uh, please share, subscribe, tell your friends about it. Woohoo, tons of fun. And please stay safe and stay healthy. We'll see you next time.